Finally, episode number eight. Hello and welcome to development of FPX Game Engine. For all of you who do not know me, my name is Ivan Mandic, I'm a game developer and programmer. In this series of videos, I'm talking about my game engine development. Now, the main reason for not uploading a video for such a long time is, let's say, a lack of inspiration. Or, in other words, I was pretty much lazy. But, my inspiration got back about a week ago, when I started working on external GUI library in OpenGL. If you remember, in the last episode I said that my plan is to develop a whole GUI for my engine-based applications inside of the OpenGL. Now, since the panel's architecture in the engine is not designed for such thing as Windows, I decided to write external library just for it. And so I did. It's not quite yet finished, but the larger portion of it is pretty much done. So that is the thing that I will be talking about in this episode, and I really hope that you will enjoy it. Before I begin, I just want to repeat that this is not quite yet finished. There are few things to upgrade and rewrite. Also, I didn't implement all the controls that I planned for version 1.0. When I say control, I'm referring to buttons, sliders, and so on. And yes, I want to repeat that this is all done with OpenGL. Let's begin. As you can see, there are quite few windows on the screen, and each of those windows contains different things. It will take me a few minutes to explain everything, and of course, the sweetest part is coming on the end, so stay tuned. Let's begin from the beginning and talk about windows themselves. As you can see, once I select the window, I can move it around, and that is really cool, don't you think so? Once I select a window, it goes to the foreground. Also, I can scale windows, I can disable scaling, for example, in this case, I can create them and destroy in the real time. Also, I can change their color, but I will show you that later, once I get to the sliders. Once I levitate with my cursor over a windows area, it gets lighter and that is helping with focus. The most basic control in the whole library are strings. As you can see, they are just lines of text. Now, they can be in different colors, like this, red, green or blue or any other color. Also, they can be updated in the real time, so I can show some variables or things like that inside of them. As in this case, red is currently equal to 104 or 104. Now, next to strings are buttons. They can only be clicked and once I click them, they are calling their event function. I will show that to you later. Next, in complexity of the buttons come checkboxes. They are simply booleans that can be true or false. So. They can be true, their indicator is green, and also they can be false, it's white. So that is pretty much everything about them, they are not so fancy. Maybe checkboxes are not so fancy, but they are definitely useful. Next in the line of complexity are text boxes, actually one line text boxes because I didn't yet finish multi-line text boxes. Now I divided them in four examples to show you. So first one is normal, second one is numeric, and then we have password and numeric password. As you can assume, this normal can accept any char. So I can use numbers, this, or some more numbers. Now, as you can see, once I pass the size of the text box, it all the st string inside moves to the left and everything on the beginning that is not fitting inside of the text box is being removed but you can see that it's glowing green and that means that it's still being edited but if I finish editing you can see that now the string inside of the text box is being shown from the beginning and on the end you can see three dots that is indicating that 
I, I'm not seeing the whole that you are not seeing the whole string inside of the text box also once I get back to the editing I can see it from the end and that is how it works second one is numeric as you can assume it's used only for numbers and also decimal numbers that is all fancy about it now then we have password as you know you don't want people to see your password so if I ever get to use this library for something that will need password I can make passwords very easily now once I type password inside you will not be able to see it inside of the text box but I grabbed it and printed it in this inside of this string so you will be able to see it anyways so let's see what could be a password password so yes this is the password now it is being shown here I can I can also make big letters and small letters and spacing that is it now the last one but not the least is a numeric password you know that sometimes you need only numbers in the password and if you can write a numeric edit or one line text box why not make a numeric password one line text box so as you assume it's only used for numbers and they are not being visible so that is everything about text boxes there is one more thing but I will talk about it a little bit later well, let's talk about lists to be honest I really really hate this control because it was the first thing I wrote for this library and it's not working the way I wanted uh, in this here example I will show you how the feature that I was talking about a few seconds ago inside of these text boxes works and that is the return key feature so once I press the return the function user programmable function is being called so let's say thing and press return key and it will add a string from here to the list so one more time maybe one more I can use also the button for the same thing as I am using return key now the thing I don't like these two buttons are actually using used as sliders and uh, my plan is to develop a whole new list control with nice sliders three view and folders things like that also i can remove objects from here so i will definitely rewrite this and make it work as i want the re main reason for not doing it for this video is because i wanted this video as soon as possible online to show all of this to you uh, here you can see that if I scale this window uh, that if text is not fitting on the title bar that it will also show three dots on the end and only part of the text now for example as you can see when I'm scaling this window and all of these text boxes are not fitting inside they are just simply not being shown and in this here example if I scale then this text box is changing the size as the window and the reason for it is because uh, update function for each object is programmable for example here this button here lock can make this window uh, without should be shown without the title bar and also locked to the size of the original window in which everything is being rendered Windows API window and still I can scale it though I cannot move it I can also uncheck it